this is what we think of when someone says sex trafficking. It happens over there, overseas. Not in my country, not in my town. The way that he got me was he told me, let's go for a ride. We're all under 18. We're all the same age. They kidnap you and they beat you and they force you to go with them. But these young women tell a different story. Targeted and sold for sex right here in America. They're from big cities and small towns. Some are poor, some are not. But they all have one thing in common. There's always some way that you're vulnerable, vulnerable, vulnerable. And for me, it was that we moved around a lot, so I was always a new kid. As a 15-year-old girl from an upper-middle-class Catholic family, Teresa Flores was forced into being a sex slave for two years. It didn't happen in a big city, but a Midwest suburb outside of Detroit. Teresa was targeted by a boy in her high school. One day asked me if I wanted to ride home from school, and um, it all went downhill after that. She was drugged, then raped. They had taken pictures, and they threatened to show them to his, my dad's work. If Teresa didn't cooperate, she would be hurt. Even worse, her family would be hurt. They would pick me up and take me to very nice homes. I didn't walk the streets. I didn't, you know, go knocking on car doors ever. Um, this was all very upscale homes. And uh, kind of shuttled to a bedroom in the basement area and... Um, people would come one after the other. Forced into sex four, five, six times a night. I just kept hoping that the next time would be the last time. Professor Celia Williamson is working to help the FBI understand the magnitude of domestic sex trafficking. How could it not be thriving? How can it not? This is a business where you can sell your product over and over and over. This is a business where if that victim is found, they're more likely to get prosecuted, and you're more likely to walk away. Why would it not be thriving? It's a business that doesn't involve pimps and prostitutes, but watchers, recruiters, and connectors. The recruiter may be another little girl 14 or 15 years old. It may be a little fella around the neighborhood who's 15 or 16. It could be another adult woman. You don't know who it is going to be. And, and that's how this profession thrives, is because we are unaware of who this recruiter is going to look like. Recruiters target schools, malls, and restaurants. Once the girl is forced into the ring, a watcher monitors her, making sure she is never really alone. The connectors find the people who will pay for sex. No one is really safe. I mean, the safety is in the knowledge. Signs someone may be trapped by traffickers. If you find hotel keys in your daughter's room or purse, they suddenly have new jewelry they can't afford, or an extra cell phone. Another sign, if a mysterious boyfriend shows up and you're not allowed to know where he lives. I was very good at lying. I was very good because my life was on the line. Teresa's father got transferred, moving her and her family thousands of miles away, unknowingly helping his little girl break free. Two years. I was lucky and, we, and I escaped. Most girls don't. Most girls die in it. I'm Melissa Nab reporting.